Hello and welcome to High Energy Health. I'm your host, Dawson Church, and every week I just bubble over with joy and enthusiasm about connecting with you. And there are a lot of reasons for this. One is that there's so much remarkable research being released every week now that shows that reducing our stress, that entering states of connection with our body, that meditating, that time in nature, that all of these ways are having powerful effects, not just on our psyche, we don't just feel better and have a better mood, but on our bodies. A recent study looked at the results of people being in nature, and they found that if people are in nature, it produces a whole host of epigenetic changes in their bodies. So they're literally getting healthier just by being in touch with the planet. But one cool study that came out recently too, looked at urban dwellers. Now these are people who live in Tokyo or New York City or Buenos Aires and don't have access to that forest to go walk barefoot in. And it found that if they just walked into the nearest park and stood there and exposed themselves to nature, just and drank in the majesty of the trees and the shrubs and the sunlight and the grass around them, just that exposure produced similar epigenetic changes to those people who are doing full-fledged forest bathing. So make sure you honor yourself and you get outside and do those things which nudge the needle. We know the things, we know the techniques like meditation, like EFT, like all kinds of energy medicine techniques have a dramatic effect. When you affect energy, you affect matter. But it's so remarkable now to see how this isn't just producing changes in mood, it's literally making the cells of our bodies healthier. And so if you read the science, if you look at what's going on, there's more and more evidence of these techniques, not just having spiritual benefit. In Buddhism, they call this merit. You're not just acquiring merit by doing these things. You're also having a powerful effect on your health and longevity. And do those things day by day by day, make them habits. What then shows up is that lifestyle change shows up in the form of increased longevity. So when you read, for example, 30-year longitudinal studies or 40-year longitudinal studies, the Harvard University Adult Development Department has now been studying human beings' adult development since 1938. And they have a huge amount of data on this. And they show what shifts the needle. And what shifts the needle is self-transcendence, that ability to move beyond yourself, be drawn into something greater than yourself, and it shows up in increased longevity. So you're doing this walk in Central Park every day. You're just walking outside and getting a breath of fresh air every day. You're meditating for a few minutes in the morning. You're centering yourself by tapping after you get stressed. And then cumulatively, over time, that's producing this wonderful thing called longevity. As we find in these longevity studies, the people do, who do this are living five years longer. In one optimism study published in the British Medical Journal, 10 years longer. Cumulatively, my mentor, Norman Sheely, says that if you add up all the research into all the methods, the cumulative effect of using all of these methods regularly in your life is 40 years. So you're learning about them here on the show. You're also using the show to fill your mind with positive thoughts, positive ideas, positive images, positive messages. And by doing that alone, you're moving the needle. So I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're sharing. And I know that for me, this part of my week is one of the high points of my week because I get a chance to connect with you, bring you useful information and inspire you and hopefully inspire you to take action. So keep taking notes, make sure you make, uh, you really, you really pay attention because this week we're going to be dealing with a topic we don't usually deal with directly in terms of health and, and well-being, but that can make a tremendously enormous difference to your life. We'll be talking about money and particularly about stock trading. My guest today is Simon Ree. Simon has worked as a professional in the financial markets since the early 1990s. He started his career as a futures broker. He loves studying the markets, trading the markets, and informing people about trading. During his long career, he's worked at Goldman Sachs, also at Citibank in Singapore, and is also the author of the best-selling book, 
the Tao of Trading, How to Build Abundant Wealth in Any Market Condition. Simon's passion for trading extends beyond the markets. Analyzing the markets, writing about the markets, his blog is really entertaining, and also teaching others on how to trade the markets. He's been mentoring aspiring traders for a few years now and showing them the secrets he uses to trade the market successfully. Simon is also very interested in those other levels of being. He is a Reiki master and a Jeet Kune Do instructor. Simon, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. It, the pleasure is all mine, Dawson. I've, I've been a, a fan of your work for, for several years now, and it really is a, a real pleasure to connect with you. You know, you sent me a book, The Tao of Trading, and I just want to show it to people. So if you're listening on audio only, you won't be able to see this. If you're watching on video, you can see it. But um, using the Dawson dog ear test, <laughs> I'm showing the edge of Simon's book over here. And I marked and highlighted and underlined so many passages in the book because Simon's book really makes this process easy. And so we'll mention his website, how to connect with him, how to be on his mailing list, how to read his blog. But his book is a super simple and a really fun way to learn about trading stocks. I know, Simon, when um, I do live classes, live workshops, we, we have a part of the workshop usually where we have people score their fears and beliefs. And the part of life that people score the highest on in terms of fear is money. And so I, I, I recommend your book as an antidote. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Fun. Thank you very much. Make it easy. And so how did you first get into this, this area that for many people is a black box and a scary one? Well, I, as you said in, in my bio, I've, I've worked in the, the finance industry, really my, my whole professional career. I, I studied economics and finance at university. And you know, I, I was always interested in, in the stock market. And the, the 1987 stock market crash happened in my, my second last year of high school. And um, I, I think that was, it was kind of a formative experience for me watching that happen in, in real time. And it was just something that I, I always felt just, just drawn to from a, from a really intellectually curious perspective. And when I graduated from university, I, I worked for a short time as a futures broker. And, and that was great. I mean, it was, you know, wheeling and dealing and, and markets and that sort of thing. But I, I just didn't find, uh, you know, wheat and orange juice as interesting or as dynamic as, <laughs> as companies. And, you know. Pork bellies. <laughs> yeah, it didn't, didn't do it for me. I, I sort of thought Microsoft and Dell and, and it, was, it was a lot more exciting. So uh, made, made the leap to, to stocks um, and had a, had a long career with, with Goldman and then worked for, for Citibank for a few years as well. And I think the, 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 the 2008 financial crisis was a, a real formative experience for me as well. Um, I was working for Goldman at the time and I was listening to the analysts who were, I, I thought that these were the smartest guys in the room. And you know, they, all, they, all they'd say all year was, you know, buy the dip, buy the dip, this is cheap, this is undervalued. And uh, I, I lost a, a life-changing sum of money that year uh, following following this advice. And I thought, well, there's, there's got to be a better way. And that's when I really kind of plunged very deep into technical analysis. Now, my, my first boss, in my futures breaking job, it was a big technician, technical analyst, looking at charts and price action. And um, I kind of dusted off what I'd learned from him and, and really, really poured myself in, into studying everything that I could. And I, I had the benefit of a benefit of a Bloomberg screen. I, I could test strategies at nighttime after work and that sort of thing. And I, I, I used, I guess, the, the tools I had available to me and, and the experience to, to build a set of frameworks and, and systems that, um, that they're time tested and, and they offer me a, and, and my members a, a really strong edge in the markets. Yeah, and you explain them so clearly too in the book and many concepts that actually were quite hard for me to grasp earlier were really easy the way you lay them out. You also make them fun. So you may have been emotionally scarred by losing that money, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the joy you have in it really shows up in the book now. Oh, thank you for that. I mean, it, it is, I, I find it, it, it's, you never stop learning. You know, as soon as you think you've got this game sussed, the market is going to deal you a swift kick in the pants. Um, so it's, it's, it's always humbling, but, it, but it's always interesting. You, you never stop learning. You never get stale. And I, I, love, I love it when you, you share information with somebody and you, you see that light bulb go on. It's one of the most 
gratifying experiences for me. And, and as you said, um, financial stress, financial fear, it's something that burdens most of us. And I, I guess I see it as my, my vision is to, to try and help alleviate that burden of financial stress so people can go about living in a more creative, more joyful lives. Yeah, and as you're listening to Simon and I chatting, just imagine your life if you had no financial stress whatsoever. If you were an imaginary, if you had, had a MacArthur grant and your financial needs were taken care of for the foreseeable future, if you were a trust fund baby and you had no need to earn money, what, what would you do with your life? What might, might your life look, look like if that source of financial stress was totally gone? Simon, I actually study people like this when uh, I was in my, my 20s and 30s. I was so curious about what they did with their lives. And um, they, they, most people's lives are conditioned by the need to make money. And so when you don't need to make money, what do you do? Do you go out to become a genius? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> become a drunk? <laughs> Both part, any part is open to you. Yeah, I guess um, having, a, a, should we call it a, a higher calling or, or a mission or, or, or you know, some, something that gives you meaning and, and a sense of contribution is, is really, really important. Um, to me, People often ask, you know, what, what's the definition of success? Is it making CEO? Is it becoming a millionaire? Whatever. To me, success is inner peace combined with a, a sense of contribution. Um, and, and if I can tick those boxes, I, I feel as though I'm successful. Inner peace plus contribution. That's a wonderful formula for looking at this. And um, so it's inner peace. And of course, the, um, the monk in his cell, remotely living remotely in the, in the top of the mountain, uh, he has inner peace, <laughs> but may not be making not much of a contribution. And then the person making a contribution but not in, in a peace, again, only has half the puzzle. So that's a powerful definition of success. So I invite you now just to take a moment Think about your definition of success. Normally, I don't do this on these shows. I don't have you. That, we don't. We don't hit hit the pause button and say just make a note over here. But just think a moment about what your definition of success is. You just heard Simon's definition of success: the combination of inner peace plus contribution. What is your definition of success? If you were ultimately successful, what would that look like? Just take a moment now and make a note of that. So you can reflect on this really important question. Simon, one of the uh, things that happened when I was looking at those rich people who had no need to work was that Ted Turner was the first to really kick off this movement toward what's now called the Giving Pledge. And uh, Bill Gates signed the Giving Pledge, Warren Buffett signed the Giving Pledge, many people signed the Giving Pledge. Ted Turner said, this was really shocking. He said, we shouldn't be looking at the fortune list of the hundred wealthiest people in the world or the thousand wealthiest, we should be looking at the list of the thousand top givers in the world. It's not accumulating that makes you successful, it's giving. And that led to this huge movement, which has now really taken over and also has created, I don't know what the difference is in terms numerically of the amount of wealth that's available through charitable foundations now, I know it's a hugely larger percentage than it was when Ted Turner did that in the 1980s. So um, that's one, one big metric to look at is, is what, what, what you give what, and what you, can do, what you can do. You can do a lot if you're an individual human being and you're a kind person and you're, you're a compassionate person without any money. But what you can do when you can write a check is tremendously further out is much more influential than what you can do personally just within the sphere of your own influence so um it's powerful to look at our lives that way and and isn't that a beautiful way of flip, flipping the script you know let's not look at what people have accumulated let's look at what they've given yeah yeah i, I think it's i think it's wonderful yeah and you know when you reach the point where you are financially successful and you 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 do look at your life you do say to yourself what can i what can I give? When you die, it's going to be of no use to you. So, <laughs> <laughs> indeed, <laughs> may as well make a difference in the here and now. And then um, your your spiritual journey, which led to becoming a Reiki master and and a martial arts instructor. How did that come about? 
That's, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, it's, it's something that, again, I, I've always been curious about. When I was um, a teenager, I was maybe 15 or 16, my parents sent me off on a, a silver workshop, you know, the Jose Silva uh, Mind Development Workshop. And that, that kind of really just, I guess, piqued my interest at, at an early age. And it's something that I've always had, a, I guess, a deep curiosity about ever since. And um, martial arts, again, it, it's something that uh, is it's the only sport I've any had any sort of kind of natural aptitude towards. I was, I was never much of a, a ball sport player. You know, I struggled most ball sports. But for some reason, uh, martial arts, it all, all just seemed to, to tick. Uh, and martial arts is really the, I guess, my first experience in, uh, I guess, the benefits of meditation in terms of really bringing you into the present moment and, uh, you know, that stopping of thinking and, and so forth. So uh, it, it's been an important part of my life for, for many years. And I think, um, you know, I, I, I studied pranic healing and I studied Reiki and I've studied the, the Ashanti system uh, and all of them have got a, a huge amount of intellectually satisfying benefits um, but also I think great benefits in terms of just reducing your stress and, and again finding that inner peace uh, one of the things that we we find in in trading or I, I found in trading is if um, if you're stressed your ability to make high quality decisions is compromised you know stress literally makes us stupid and and anything that you can do to remove or, or reduce stress is going to benefit you um, the other thing in the, the funny thing about financial markets is if you if you've got some deep seated sense that you don't deserve to be rich or you're, you're not entitled to wealth, the financial markets will figure that out and, and show it to you. Um, and, and so, again, in any work that I think people can do to uh, let go of those limiting beliefs can, can be enormously beneficial. And. People often ask me, you know, what, what book should I read if I want to be a better trader? You know, what, what, what trading books should I read? And I mean, I, you know, I'll usually recommend my book. Um, but, but outside of that, I'm, I'm more likely to recommend a book by uh, Dawson Church or Joe Dispenza than, uh, you know, a, a, another trading book. Yes, and reduce that stress. And then people become much more centered and balanced. And then they can make wise, wise choices. It's funny, Simon, because my wife, I, um, my wife, Christine is a wonderful human being with all kinds of talents. And one of those is she doesn't really uh, want to actively manage our money, but we're married and we've been married for a long time. We'll be married hopefully for till, till we die. And so um, we, I, I feel I need to show her everything to do with uh, my business and to do with, with, with our, our portfolio. And, um, but she, she'll just respond with shock and horror if she sees a loss. <laughs> emotional roller coaster for her it's so funny watching her you know because when you're when you're when you are centered when you tap when you meditate when you're calm when you're in that 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 space you just you know you see these squiggles on a chart they go up they go down um your strategies work sometimes they don't, don't work other times and uh it's it, for me it's, it's just not not really emotional there's not there's not like a big emotional tag attached to it uh -huh. But to her there's this huge emotional tag so i i, I watch this and only actually we've been most successful when she's really calm so when she's really calm and i'm usually calm and then we we make trades that way and um our system's calm then and then we can we can trade effectively and wisely so it's really interesting you know li living with with somebody who <laughs> whom a loss is a big emotional event <laughs> you've hit the nail on the head because trading if, if you allow it to be it can be a huge emo emotional roller coaster and and maintaining that emotional even keel is, is really important and and in my my online training i, I devote a whole module to to that um a, a happy trader is a successful trader it, it's not the other way around <laughs> I love that a happy trader is a successful trader. So you get happy first, and then you you trade. Yeah, you trade yeah. a whole lot better. Yeah, yeah, and emotionally. So you you actually teach people stress reduction. What sort of stress reduction methods uh, do you recommend that they get into? So I mean, there are, there are three predominantly, uh, and in order of I guess accessibility. Uh, one that I like is is breath work because it gives you benefits right now, and it's. There's minimal investment involved. Now that the benefits are not perhaps long term, they may only last for an hour or so. But if you're feeling a bit head up and you know you've you've had some sort of something that's put you on an emotional 
you're not on an emotional even kilter. Uh, breath work can be great at just centering yourself and, and, and doing the work that you need to do. Um, then there's tapping. Uh, EFT, which uh, I, I actually learned from you. you. You probably don't realize that, but uh, <laughs> I attribute my, my tapping knowledge to you. Um, but I, I, I love tapping because it provides both benefits in the here and now plus cumulative benefits. Uh, and, and again, the, the time investment, it, it's slightly more than breath work, but it's still really only a, a few minutes a day. So I, I think tapping is, is wonderful and everyone should learn about that. And then there's meditation. And, and meditation is something that I've had a uh, I've fallen in and out of love with it. And, and I've, I've had periods of my life where I've had a pretty good meditation practice. And then I've had periods of my life where, where it's gone awry. But um, I'm halfway through your, your wonderful book, Bliss Brain. And I have never felt like more convinced and more committed to become a, you know, a serious meditator. And, and I think that your eco meditation at you know, 20 minutes a day, it's accessible, you know, the investment is not huge, but uh, I think the benefits are, are tremendous. And like, like I said, I've, I've never been more convinced of the benefits than I have been uh, from reading your book. So, so thank you for that. Yeah, and I really want to get that message across to people and especially people in the spiritual community and the personal transformational community, because uh, we've always thought about spiritual growth, meditation and all those things in one bucket and then money and financial success in a different bucket and no kind of link between them. And what you're showing us in your book and what you're showing us in your work is that the two are really highly interrelated. I think there are enormous synergies. Yeah, I mean, you, you, need, to, you need to learn the markets. You need to learn what probabilities are, how to generate a probabilistic edge, how to read charts, how to identify setups. That, that, that is important. But once you've got those basics down, and, and when, that doesn't take years, that takes weeks. It's working on yourself. That, that's where you're going to get the, the, the real improvement. Um, it's, it's not buying some fancy new indicator or, or learning 15 new trading techniques. Once you get three or four good trading techniques under your belt, uh, the rest of the work is, is internal. Yeah. Yeah, the internal work can be so powerful. And the other uh, really traditional idea is that people on the spiritual path are following the spiritual path or they're releasing what the Bible, what the King James Version calls mammon money uh, to be spirituals. And, you know, that, that, that immortal verse from the Psalms that the love of money is the root of all evil. And so you have to let go of money and attachment to money to be spiritual. I have people in, in live workshops, I have them uh, say the words out loud. I love money and money loves me. And then we score their level of emotional distress. And it's usually really high. They, yeah. They're totally incongruent. <laughs> Maybe work on tapping that away. But, but we, there's been this real um, gulf between spirituality and money. And I want to get into that in the next segment. So we're going to take a break right now. When we get back, I want to really look at the whole relationship of money to spirituality and why these two are not only not opposites or um or different poles, why they're so closely linked. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after a short break. Dawson Church's award-winning book, Mind to Matter, has been hailed as one of the best science and health books of the decade. Over 400 studies show that your brain has the ability to turn thoughts to things, and that when you use the superpower deliberately, you can create an extraordinary life. Mind to Matter is the science and practice of how our brains create reality, and Dawson is so committed to helping people transform that he's giving copies of the book away free at mindtomatter.com. Claim your free copy at mindtomatter.com now. Imagine your love life, your health, your money, your career, your spiritual path. If you had the ability to turn your dreams into reality, the people who have discovered how to do this are master manifestors. Now you can learn their secrets at mastermanifestor.com. They'll give you a 21-day crash course in intuition, synchronicity, and manifestation. In just seven minutes each day, the experts at mastermanifestor.com will train your brain to be like theirs. mastermanifestor.com there's a completely natural method to help boost your immune system, maybe even up to 113% in a week. If you're interested in saving money without supplements and other expensive remedies, then explore the 7-Day Immunity Booster Program. It includes seven powerful audio programs. Two clinical trials even show that these methods can help increase your body's immunity naturally. So visit StressDump.com and find out how you can boost your immune system. That's StressDump.com. StressDump.com. 
Imagine having a certified wellness professional at your service 24-7. Whenever you're stressed, anxious, angry, sleepless, or depressed, you get help the moment you need it. You can talk to a compassionate practitioner anytime you want at MyStressSolution.com. In the Stress Solution app, trained experts are standing by when you need them most. Experience a free introductory session at MyStressSolution.com. You never have to face your problems alone. Get instant help at MyStressSolution.com. Helping other people heal is deeply satisfying. Watching a child's pain disappear before your eyes, a loved one calming down after a panic attack, or a veteran recovering from PTSD is a wonderful feeling. Imagine yourself with the skills and confidence to help people every single day and a rewarding career in energy healing. Taught by expert faculty, you'll become skilled in techniques validated in over 1,000 scientific studies. So get certified as an energy psychology professional today at www.newhealer.com. Your first course is free at www.newhealer.com. Welcome back to High Energy Health. My name is Dawson Church, and I so appreciate you being here and you filling your mind with positive messages, positive media by being here. For more on Simon Rees' work, go to his website, daoftrading.com. That's T A O, daoftrading.com. And his book is also called The Dao of Trading. So go ahead and check it out. It's really a simple guide to demystifying stock trading user-friendly, takes you through step-by-step, -step, introduces basic concepts in ways that's really easy to understand. And actually, you can tell he's having fun throughout. So go to Dow of Trading to either get the book or to know learn about his, 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 um, his mailing list, his blog posts, and his courses. Also, to pick up a copy of my new book, go to blissbrain.com. You can also get eight free meditations there. We have eight free downloadable meditations at blissbrain.com. And we've been doing some cool MRI studies and showing that in, in a month of using these meditations, people literally start to have changes in two important parts of the brain. One part called the midprefrontal cortex, the part that makes you miserable, and the other is the part that makes you compassionate, that dramatically upregulates. That's called the insula. And research is now showing that it deep down regulates the midprefrontal cortex and upregulates the insula to do those meditations at blissbrain.com. So do yourself a favor, get compassionate, reduce your suffering with those, those eight free meditations at blissbrain.com. And again, Simon's website is Dow of Trading, T A O, Dow of Trading.com. So for centuries, for all of human history, we've had the holy people over here, the temple, then we've had the marketplace, mammon, money, these people who are just not paying attention to it at all. In fact, in Whispering Simon, I do the analysis of, um, of what percentage of the population is interested in, in, in spirituality, in higher consciousness, and which part doesn't give a flip. And it turned out that around 1980, when the, these studies were first being conducted, it was 99 to one, that about 99% of people just didn't give a flip. And 1% of people were already on some kind of spiritual path. They were meditating, they were going to, to really focusing on personal growth. But then by the early 2000s, it had risen to 4%. And then it's up nudging 20% now. So it's really, really, going up and so wow. that old breakdown that you had to go into the monastery spend ten thousand hours follow the guru blah 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 <laughs> now it's, if the model is much more go do it at work do it at home and make it part of your regular life so i think you're really helping bridge that gap with with your work i think it's an important uh an important gap to bridge because as you as you say so many people perceive them to be diametrically opposed you know, money is evil, spirituality is good, and and the kind of there's no middle ground. Um, and I don't know where this belief came from, um, but to me, my money is spiritual. I mean, all you need to do is is, is look at the amount of good that you, you can do with money. Uh, to, to your point earlier, you know, Ted Turner and you know, the, the, the giving, um, that there is a tremendous amount of good that can be done with money. Yes, and you 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 can't accomplish that good without money. So, but then what? How do you you know? Again, that there's an emotional component of it when you when you start to do those things. When you start to use breath work, start to tap. When you start to meditate, what then happens with your relationship with money? And give us an example, perhaps either from your own life or lives of the people people you worked with. 
Well, I think there are there are a couple of couple of things to unpack here. One is the idea that money is is evil. Well, let's let's not use that word. But money isn't spiritual, and I, th I think it's it's fairly easy to flip that script when you analyze the nature of money and and the, the good that can be done. Now, money is just a tool. Money itself is is inert, but it's your intention. Uh, and if your intentions are a whole, and and you set those intentions deliberately. Uh, there's absolutely no reason why, why money can't be spiritual and, and be put to good use. I think the other real stumbling block people have is, is they believe that money is scarce. I mean, the, the Federal Reserve balance sheet's $9 trillion. I mean, money is, is, <laughs> money is bloody everywhere. You know, it's, it's anything but scarce. <laughs> um, you, you know, you look at, you look at the, uh, the New York Stock Exchange, it turns over, I think, more, more than $400 billion a day. There's, there's lots of money. The money is everywhere. And it's just, just being open to it and, and not, I guess, not repelling it by sensing it as something evil, but, but you know, trying to attract it by, by recognizing it as, as a power or, or a tool for good. And, and what, I, what I say to people who are trading it, it it's, it's very popular in, in the trading world for people to promote trading. It, it's a zero sum game. It's dog eat dog. For every winner, there's a loser. And you know, those things may or may not be true because you've got no idea who's on the other side of your trade and, and what their intentions and motivations are. And I, I think it's much more helpful to think about the financial markets as just that they're a river of abundance, a river of opportunity. And all we're trying to do is just scoop our hand in that river and, and take a little bit out for ourselves. Mm. Yeah, and our expertise at doing that is going to make, it, make a difference. Our attitude to doing that is going to make a difference. Our beliefs about, about money is going to make a difference. Another... Uh, money myth we find in the workshops that people often believe in is that if I have more, somebody else must be having less. How do you address that, that myth? Well, again, this goes back to the, the scarcity mindset. And, and the fact is money, money is created in, in modern society at, at rates that people can't even comprehend. Uh, and this is through the, the, the fractional reserve banking system. Well, we, in the US, we don't even have reserve requirements anymore, but but the process of credit creation means that the, the you know the limits on the amount of money going around are almost infinite. Um, you know, money is being created every day. It's it's not scarce. It's it's almost infinite. Uh, there's, there is more than enough to go around. And so, if you have that belief, that's going to stop you from dipping your hand into that river and uh, and learning to to perfect your skills and your scoop, and then. Um, what, what other uh, myths do you find are prevalent in the people you work with? When you, start, when you start working with people in your courses, what do you find that they're really, what's really impeding them in their view of money? Well, I mean, there, there are so many myths and so many of them are, are kind of deliberately perpetrated by traditional finance, Wall Street. Um, I write about some of them in my book. I mean, the, the number one myth is that is this idea that 10% per annum is an, is an amazing return. 10% uh, per annum is, is a figure that often gets touted because it's, it's roughly equivalent to the long-term performance of the S&P 500 over, over a very long period of time. So 10% a year is a return that Wall Street can generate for you without really having to break a sweat, without having to employ a lot of effort. But they'll be very happy to charge you a bunch of fees for doing that. Um, you know, I, I talk to people in, in my workshops about, well, instead of earning 10% a year, well, why don't you target 5% per month? Oh, no, 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 you can't do that. That's impossible. You can't, you can't generate those sorts of returns. And, and people, they, they recoil against numbers like that because they've been systematically lied to their whole lives about what, what a good return is. Uh, the returns that are touted as good are actually pretty crappy. Uh, and fi a 5% return per month is, is something that many, many, many of my members are, are, are achieving. And, and that, that's kind of my goal, to, to make 5% a month. Uh, you, you compound that, and, and the results are really quite stunning. Uh, and many of my members are actually doing better than that. Well, that's amazing. And that, again, is changing your mindset. Like, I always had that idea. And uh, so thinking about that, that annualized return and to, to flip it and say, just change that, that belief and have this monthly goal is, is really powerful. We're going to go to a break right now. Please stay tuned. You're listening to High Energy Health. My guest is Simon Ree. 
his book and his website is the Tao of Trading. We'll be right back after a break. Dawson Church's award-winning book, Mind to Matter, has been hailed as one of the best science and health books of the decade. Over 400 studies show that your brain has the ability to turn thoughts to things, and that when you use this superpower deliberately, you can create an extraordinary life. Mind to Matter is the science and practice of how our brains create reality, and Dawson is so committed to helping people transform that he's giving copies of the book away free at mindtomatter.com. Claim your free copy at mindtomatter.com now. Imagine your love life, your health, your money, your career, your spiritual path. If you have the ability to turn your dreams into reality, the people who have discovered how to do this are master manifestors. Now you can learn their secrets at mastermanifestor.com. They'll give you a 21-day crash course in intuition, synchronicity, and manifestation. In just seven minutes each day, the experts at mastermanifestor.com will train your brain to be like theirs. mastermanifestor.com There's a completely natural method to help boost your immune system, maybe even up to 113% in a week. If you're interested in saving money without supplements and other expensive remedies, then explore the 7-Day Immunity Booster Program. It includes seven powerful audio programs. Two clinical trials even show that these methods can help increase your body's immunity naturally. So visit StressDump.com and find out how you can boost your immune system. That's StressDump.com. StressDump.com. Imagine having a certified wellness professional at your service 24-7. Whenever you're stressed, anxious, angry, sleepless, or depressed, you get help the moment you need it. You can talk to a compassionate practitioner anytime you want at MyStressSolution.com. In the Stress Solution app, trained experts are standing by when you need them most. Experience a free introductory session at MyStressSolution.com. You never have to face your problems alone. Get instant help at MyStressSolution.com. Helping other people heal is deeply satisfying. Watching a child's pain disappear before your eyes, a loved one calming down after a panic attack, or a veteran recovering from PTSD is a wonderful feeling. Imagine yourself with the skills and confidence to help people every single day in a rewarding career in energy healing. Taught by expert faculty, you'll become skilled in techniques validated in over 1,000 scientific studies. So get certified as an energy psychology professional today at www.newhealer.com. Your first course is free at www.newhealer.com. Hello and welcome back to High Energy Health. I am your host, Dawson Church, and I love sharing with you every week. Make coming to High Energy Health weekly and being inspired a habit. There's so much good information here, but also there are so many actionable things you can put to use in your life that will make you healthier and will make you happier. For more on Simon's work, go to his website, which is DowofTrading.com. His book is also called DowofTrading.com, and you can get a copy of the book. You can also take courses, classes from him, online courses, and also to subscribe to his blog, which is entertaining and interesting and very digestible. It's really short, that has pithy and really thoughtful ideas. I know I subscribe and read it as soon as it appears in my inbox. So go to dialtrading.com and subscribe. Simon, I'd love to hear uh, stories about people who've shifted their mindset, and then that's resulted in a shift in their wealth or in their their well-being or their trading like for example you just shifted mine by talking about a monthly return i've never thought about trying to hit a monthly target before i've always looked at an annualized return so you just shifted mine and i'm sure i'll, I'll go places with that what else do you do you see people people doing and then making it making a difference in their in their lives i think one one of the other great myths that gets perpetrated is this idea that um, high risk equals high return. And we need to think about what risk actually is. So risk is the permanent loss of capital. Okay, R risk is, is losing. So what Wall Street wants people to believe is that in order to increase your chances of winning, you have to increase your chances of losing. And I, I, I've got an alternative notion in that uh, in order to increase our chances of winning, uh, we are responsible for minimizing our chances of losing. I think that makes a whole lot more sense. And um, I've got a member in Canada, he, he's got a, an MBA and he's, he's a chartered accountant as well. And he wrote to me and said, he, he, he did my course 
And he said he, he thought that my course was more valuable to him than his MBA and his chartered accounting qualification. Uh, and, and I quote, he said, he's making so much money, he thinks he's dreaming. And, and, and what flipped the script for him was this focus on minimizing risk, always focus on risk, be a, be a really competent risk manager first. And, and that's something that I, I always say to my members, if, if you can control your risk and, and focus on keeping your losses small and you just repeat the process, the profits almost can't help but flow to you in the end. If, if you go out and take big risks and, and a couple of big losses early on, that, that, that can wipe you out. But it's, it's risk management that keeps you in the game over the long term. And if, if you can stay in the game and you, and you follow the process, you're, you're almost guaranteed success. Interesting, because when you do get that loss and you talk about how you do get those losses, it is inevitable that if you are emotional and if you allow that to affect you emotionally and then become the lens through which you bring in fear, um, there's a wonderful, I've been watched the new movie, Dune, but one of the refrains there is, fear is the mind killer. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great quote, yeah. Um, so loss, losses are... They're just part of the game. It's it's part of the business. Um, they're inevitable because we're playing probabilities, not certainties. And the way I encourage people to treat losses is as an operating expense. You know, a, a loss on a trade should trigger as a much emotion in you as buying toner for your printer or office stationery. You know, it is just an operating expense. Now. If we run trading like a business, and any good business manager is going to try and minimize their operating expenses, but but you're never going to eradic eradicate them completely. And and losses, it's just part of the game. It's just an operating expense, and and that's as much emotion as you should attach to them. Hmm. You know, people people make losses and they think, oh, I've made a mistake, or I'm stupid, or I'm dumb, or I've done something wrong. Maybe you have made a mistake early on, but but quite often it's just probabilities. And we're always playing probabilities, never certainties in training. Wow. Yeah. Probabilities, not certainties. I like that, that way of seeing it and way of holding it. And that, that makes it less scary. And then seeing your, your losses just as operating costs is really, again, a, it's, it's a mindset that shifts your reality picture and you shift your reality picture and then your, your literal objective reality starts to change. So it's uh a really good example of mind to matter, how you can sh start to really trade differently when you shift your mindset in that way. What has been some of the other big kind of milestones for you in terms of mindset shift? So for me, it's personally, it's, it's managing stress. It's, it's, I, I just realized that stress really impairs my ability to make high quality decisions. So I've, I've really embarked on a, you know, a personal mission to to do whatever I can and you know that it includes things like hard physical exercise meditation tapping breath work they're, they're kind of my, my key key cornerstones and then that's that's what I, I found really helpful for me feedback from my members um, yeah to taking the emotion out of losses has been a big one um, realizing that trading isn't necessarily you know a zero-sum dog-eat-dog game uh, the realization that uh, money is incredibly abundant it, it is everywhere and, and it, it's it, it, it's just everywhere there is so much money around in the world and i just losing that scarcity mindset i mean um most people have have no difficulty believing that they can manifest financial hardship <laughs> you know? too funny so why not just flip that script you know if, if that is true then the reverse is also true too funny so you have your belief in financial hardship is sky high <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too funny just reverse it and believe in abundance instead and then you do that persistently and another thing about this is that when you when you start to um, really focus on these ideas and changing your mind it's really important to have that consistency and to to follow through and make those mindset shifts again and again and again, because our conditioned condition behavior is going to take us right back to our old mindset when we're trying to install a new one. And, and the changes are so subtle that from day to day, you don't even know that anything's happening. So the other thing that I encourage people to do is just keep a very short diary of their emotional state when they're trading. 
How am I feeling? Am I feeling confident? Am I feeling stressed? Am I feeling centered? What's going through my mind? It only has to be three or four lines. And you do that day to day and it, you sort of think, well, okay, what, what's the point? But then you, you look at what you wrote today versus four weeks ago or six weeks ago. And, and just the, the, the different language, the different tonality, the, it, how centered you are. And, and then you start to think, wow, okay, this, this is making a difference. Um, because those changes are so subtle. Yeah, you, you don't necessarily notice anything happening from day to day. We'll be back with more on the Dow of Training after a break. I'm your host, Dawson Church. You're listening to High Energy Health. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Dawson Church's award-winning book, Mind to Matter, has been hailed as one of the best science and health books of the decade. Over 400 studies show that your brain has the ability to turn thoughts to things, and that when you use this superpower deliberately, you can create an extraordinary life. Mind to Matter is the science and practice of how our brains create reality, and Dawson is so committed to helping people transform that he's giving copies of the book away free at mindtomatter.com. Claim your free copy at mindtomatter.com now. Imagine your love life, your health, your money, your career, your spiritual path. If you had the ability to turn your dreams into reality, the people who have discovered how to do this are master manifestors. Now you can learn their secrets at mastermanifestor.com. They'll give you a 21-day crash course in intuition, synchronicity, and manifestation. In just seven minutes each day, the experts at mastermanifestor.com will train your brain to be like theirs. mastermanifestor.com there's a completely natural method to help boost your immune system, maybe even up to 113% in a week. If you're interested in saving money without supplements and other expensive remedies, then explore the 7-Day Immunity Booster Program. It includes seven powerful audio programs. Two clinical trials even show that these methods can help increase your body's immunity naturally. So visit StressDump.com and find out how you can boost your immune system. That's StressDump.com. StressDump.com. Imagine having a certified wellness professional at your service 24-7. Whenever you're stressed, anxious, angry, sleepless, or depressed, you get help the moment you need it. You can talk to a compassionate practitioner anytime you want at MyStressSolution.com. In the Stress Solution app, trained experts are standing by when you need them most. Experience a free introductory session at MyStressSolution.com. You never have to face your problems alone. Get instant help at MyStressSolution.com Helping other people heal is deeply satisfying. Watching a child's pain disappear before your eyes, a loved one calming down after a panic attack, or a veteran recovering from PTSD is a wonderful feeling. Imagine yourself with the skills and confidence to help people every single day in a rewarding career in energy healing. Taught by expert faculty, you'll become skilled in techniques validated in over 1,000 scientific studies. So get certified as an energy psychology professional today at www.newhealer.com. Your first course is free at www.newhealer.com. Hello and welcome back to High Energy Health. I'm your host, Dawson Church, and I just love sharing with you every week on the show. Please come back and join me and you'll find we have a parade of sensational and remarkable guests to share with you. Information as well you can use that has a real benefit on your health and well-being. For more on Simon's book and his work, go to his website, daooftraining.com. That's T-A-O, daooftraining.com, T-A-O, daooftraining.com. And there you can sign up for his blog. You can find information about his courses and all his other offerings at that website. For more on my new book, go to my website, which is blissbrain.com. Make sure you download the eight free meditations there because they really can have a dramatic effect on both your, your mood and also we know now from research on your brain function. So all of that's at blissbrain.com. Simon, to close with, I'd love to have you share two things with us. One is your, your best strategies for stacking the odds in your favor in this game of the trading the market. And then secondly, before we close, I'd love to hear more about your vision for why you are doing the work you're doing to educate people and share your knowledge with them. Okay, thank you, Dawson. Well, okay, so let's talk firstly about how to stack the odds in your favor. And uh, I'm a big advocate of following the trend. I'm, I'm a trend follower. 
I think one mistake people make when they approach trading is they, you know, they, they, they try to be Warren Buffett. They, they try to buy things that look cheap um, with, with the thought that things that look cheap will perhaps one day become less cheap or, or more expensive. Um, but that's very often a losing strategy in trading. Um, what we want to do is, is follow trends. So we want to buy things that are in an uptrend or, or short sell things that are in a downtrend. Uh, people find it so tempting to try and be a contrarian and, and you know, makes the ego feel very clever if we can pick the bottom in something. Uh, but pick, there's an old saying that bottom pickers get smelly fingers. It's a, it's a very crude saying, but uh, often ends up uh, having a ring of truth to it when it comes to trading. So what I talk about in my book is very, very specific techniques about how to identify trends uh, using moving averages, um, looking for that rainbow formation that I talk about. And, and that's a very, very powerful tool for, for stacking the odds in your favor. And in my book, which, uh, you know, it's, it's $8.99 on Kindle, it, um, it, I, I actually break down step by step in great detail one of my favorite trend following techniques. I call it the bounce setup. And uh, anybody who buys the book can, can literally start implementing that. They, they don't need anything else. In terms of my, my vision, um, I sort of mentioned at the top, I, I really want to help people live more happy, joyful, creative, expressive lives by removing that burden of financial stress. And financial stress is something that plagues the, the majority of us. And for most people, the, the, the investment solutions that are available from Main Street, mainstream firms, Wall Street firms are, are not that great. They, they tend to be quite expensive. And the other thing that, that has happened is that finance has been very deliberately shrouded in mystery by the industry. Uh, the industry wants to maintain you know, what they call information asymmetry. Uh, that's just a, a complicated way of you know, them having knowing more than the general public. So I'm trying to break that down and, and really kind of revolutionize the way finance is taught by making it simple, straightforward, easy to grasp, and, and even fun. Um, and as, as you said, I, I had a lot of fun writing the book, and I, I hope it comes across to, to the reader because uh, I'm a little bit irreverent. Um, and I, I've had I've had a few former colleagues who are still in the industry. They've read the book and they've said, uh, you know, I, I wish you hadn't written some of those things. But uh, boy, I, I, I must admit, I do agree with you. <laughs> yeah. And so, what is what is your vision long term for for this cycle of your life, where you're now a teacher and you're 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 being a spiritual teacher as well as being a, a financial teacher by doing what you're doing. Look, uh, my, I guess my vision at the moment is, is just to get the word out to as many people as I can that finance, it's not as complicated and it's not as hard as you've been left to, led to believe. Uh, the returns that you can generate yourself are, are vastly higher than what you've been led to believe. Um, yes, it does require some effort. Any legitimate you know, money making, making scheme does require some effort, uh, but I think the, the reward for effort is, is enormous. Uh, and so... I've written a book. Uh, there, there may be another book in me in the future. I, I wouldn't say no. Um, but really, it, it's about, I guess, sharing my education through the book and, and through my on le online learning programs where, where I hold nothing back. And, and really, in, in the space of a few hours, people have got the opportunity to, to download three decades worth of knowledge that I've accumulated and, and more than happy to share. Um, and uh, yeah, next year, maybe I'll, I'll be launching a podcast as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of fun doing this. And I know I've been doing my podcast slash radio show for about 15 years. And uh, it's just a, a source of delight and a way to really connect with people. So um, I'd encourage that. It's, it's, it's a, a rewarding thing to do, do. And then, of course, you wind up learning something from the people who are on your podcast as well. So it's like a continuing edu education process for, for the host as well. It's, and, it's a win-win-win. Uh, win-win-win. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Simon, for being here, for doing what you're doing, for making it fun for the rest of us, for uh, suffering in those ways and then making it simple so it would be easy for, for us. And I know I've, I've learned several things already, which I began to implement from your book. And uh, it's been so, so valuable for me. And again, I just want to stress for everyone what, what Simon's saying about that the importance of doing it 
and emotionally. And that's where EFT comes in. That's where meditation comes in. As Simon mentioned, the, the, the easiest form of it is breath work, just calming and centering yourself, going back into your body. And when you do this, you approach money in a whole different way and you can, you can thrive and prosper. And really my, uh, my vision for our community and for people in the personal growth community generally is that we have it all. We have our love for what we're doing. We have compassion for other people. We're growing and healing ourselves and we're wealthy. We're able to share this with other people far beyond our, our borders. I uh, just thought back during the first segment, actually, Simon, I'll just close with this one, one, one story. Um, after I first began trading and was, was making a significant income in stocks many, many, like 15 years ago, something like that, a friend of mine got into trouble with her mortgage and her husband died, actually, very tragic, sudden death of cancer, and she was going to lose her house. And I could just write her a $25,000 check. I just can't tell you what it felt like to be able to just write someone a twenty-five thousand dollars. I actually wrote wrote the check to her with no, 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 no security, no collateral, no strings attached. The moment in my personal growth, I realized I can do this. That I couldn't wow. do when I was broke. So um, yeah. you, she did. By the way, pay it back after a couple of years. She got back on her feet. But um, uh, you know, just the you feel empowered. You can donate money. So there's, there's a worthy cause. You can write a ten thousand or twenty-five thousand dollar check to a charity you, you support. Um, when you join a church, when you join a movement, I, I, when I join something, I immediately just start a, a regular monthly donation to them. I just do it automatically. No, no, no. You don't have to think about that. So not not a big decision. Do I start donating money every month, month to this group? You just do it. So it really changes your outlook. And I want to encourage you to, as assiduously as you're working on your personal transformation, work on your money literacy. And Simon's book is a great way to do that. So thanks again. We'll be back again next week with more inspiration, more practical tips and tools. You've been listening to High Energy Health. I'm your host, Dawson Church. Till next week, be happy, be healthy.